welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin, and this is a custom video for La. He lives in the States, I want to say in the state of California. All right, he writes, Hey Austin, love your knowledge on Rolex. Great informational content. Thank you, La. Last year, I finally got a ceramic no-date sub retail. After wanting this watch for so long, I have only worn it once. I've been collecting watches for over a decade and have many to wear, but I did think I was going to wear the sub a lot more. However, that's not the case. It just doesn't feel how I want the thing to feel. Too shiny and posh for the heritage of the watch. All right, so he's talking about a modern 124060 no date sub and la it takes time to get to know and appreciate a watch and it's one of the reasons why i wear my watches not for weeks but for months at a time the character of a watch reveals itself very slowly and as you wear a watch more often than not you find the beauty in it you see aspects you didn't see if you were to wear it for one day so i would give it time now i'm curious if you're worried about scratching it or damaging it in some way and you're kind of hoarding it with the prospect of perhaps flipping it in the future and so that might be playing a part but if you think this might be your watch i would give it a month on the wrist because it's going to take some time for you to appreciate the watch la continues when I think Rolex, I think Fidel, as in Fidel Castro. This, I think, is the most iconic image of a Rolex watch over Bond. Yes, I said it. Yes, you did, La, and there goes any chance of a political career in the States. I'm kidding. Kind of. Well, nobody knows your name, so you're good. All right, but uh, look, we all have our favorite Rolex iconography, and this certainly is an iconic image and I'll give Castro this he's a real guy Bond isn't and apparently Castro was wearing two Rolexes not for the utility of it but to show how international he was and you know when it comes to the younger generation the TikTok and uh, Instagram users I'm surprised they haven't taken a note from Castro and started wearing two Rolexes at a time or one on each limb I'm talking one on each wrist and one on each ankle for a total of four Rolex watches. And why the younger generation hasn't missed this opportunity for true TikTok, Instagram twattiness, it's kind of surprising. But when it comes to Bond, I've always thought the association was kind of amusing, but it didn't really mean much to me. What I do think is kind of interesting is that the Bond creators and Ian Fleming used Rolex to bring up the Bond character, whereas Omega uses Bond to bring up their watches. And that probably shows you the pecking order of the two brands. All right, back to La. He continues, so all of this has led me to think a vintage sub would scratch the itch. So needless to say, you are the number one person to come and ask this question, which one? I was born in 76, so maybe a birthier watch. Well, La, I was born in 76 too, and Wow, I mean a birth year sub would be awesome. Before we get there, let me finish up. What I do know is I want something that I can wear every day and not worry about it being vintage. I'm sure you know what I mean. You bet I do this. What I love about Rolex watches, the fact that they can go anywhere with you. They're oysters and you can, from the moment you get it to the day you die, wear it, make memories with it and pass it on to your children. What a great symbol of a man's life, a Rolex watch that he wore all of his life. He finishes, I have no preference of date or not. I rarely ever use the date function on watches, so it doesn't bother me either way. Now, I love having the date on a watch and I find it's worth the aesthetic compromise. And there is an aesthetic compromise. It does break up the symmetry of the dial, but that functionality is a gift that keeps on giving, whereas the aesthetics are something you kind of get immune to after a while. You show me a beautiful woman, I'll show you a guy who's tired of banging her, that kind of thinking. That said, in my opinion, there's nothing more beautiful than a pre-ceramic, no-date sub, two-line with crown guards. I think it's aesthetic perfection. Just enough text on the dial, balance the masculinity, and it is clear to me why it's such an iconic watch. Now, when it comes to Law's question, there are two themes we need to think about. 
aesthetics and functionality because he wants to wear this watch every day. And right now he has a modern version. It's the pinnacle of what Rolex has done in terms of technology. And in that sense, it is very functional. We'll talk about that. But for him, it's lacking in the aesthetics department. And so what he wants to do is find something that gives him that aesthetic feel, but with the functionality of being able to be worn every day. And so it's gonna be somewhat of a balancing act. He can't go too vintage, but if he goes modern, you're gonna have uh, that insert, which I think is really the issue because it adds a thickness and a, a poshness and a shine that doesn't really look as tool watch as the pre-ceramic watches. So he mentions getting a 1976 birth year watch. And I think that is a great idea. Let's talk about some options. He would either have to get a 5512 or a 5513 if he wants to get the no date sub. All right, let's talk about the 5512 first, which is an incredibly important reference in the Rolex Submariner timeline. And I think it's the most iconic and most important sub, aesthetically speaking, because it's when Rolex really crystallized the look of this sub, and it never really changed much since then. Now, before the 5512, you had the 5508, and they ran alongside one another for a while, but the 5508 didn't have crown guards. It gives it this weak look, but with the 5512, which came out in 1959, you got those crown guards. They started off first with square crown guards, and that reference ran until 1979 or 1980, so La would be able to find a 1976 5512. So a 5512 from 1976 would be a no-date birthier option for La. Now, it would be a four-line sub. It would have the COSC chronometer rating, which they put on the 5512 in 1962. And the reason they did that is because in 1962, the 5513 came out. And I guess that was like a, a lesser version because it was a two-line version and it was not chronometer rated. So in 1962, it kind of branches off and you have the chronometer rated 5512 and the non-chronometer 5513. And that ran until 19... 89 and so again that would be another birth year no date option so either the 5512 or the 5513 there are so many important evolutionary changes to the sub that occurred during the run of those two references the 5512 brought crown guards on the sub for the first time and at first they were square kind of cube like and then they changed eventually to the tapered crown guards that we have today during the run of those two models, they went from gold paint to the white paint on the dial, and the minute marks had a track at first, and then they did away with the track, and you only had the minute marks, and then those minute marks got long for a while, and then they got short for a while. It's the first time we saw a maxi dial. In 1976, they came out with big loom plots. That would be an amazing birth year watch, a uh, maxi dial 5512 or 5513. Eventually they did away with that. For a while there was a 369 Explorer dial. And think about it, in another dimension, the sub of today has a 369 dial, but they did away with that. So many interesting changes happened during those two models and uh, having one would be an amazing piece of horological history. But having one of these vintage watches ain't all peaches and cream, especially if you're planning to wear it on a daily basis. It's going to have an acrylic crystal law, so you're not going to be able to take it in water. And this is before the advent of 904L steel and its incorporation. So corrosion on the case is something you're going to need to think about. You're going to need to make compromises. And what kind of compromises am I talking about? Well, replacement parts, replacement hands, replacement dial, replacement bezel, replacement bracelet, no box, no papers. Unless you're gonna make compromises, things are gonna get really expensive. But if you wanna spend a lot of money and you've got the money and you wanna hit Christie's or Sotheby's and pick up an amazing example, you can. But if you wanna keep it affordable, then 
I think it's going to be a little bit difficult. So here's an example of the kind of compromises you're going to have to make if you want to keep things affordable. Now this is a 5513 is the cheapest I could find in Japan. And the 5512 start at a couple thousand dollars more. And you can see it's got a replaced dial. You can tell because it's got the gold surrounds. It shouldn't have gold surrounds. So that dial was replaced during a service and that really devalues the watch. I mean, if it had the original dial, this probably would be at least $10,000 more. It's got a replaced bracelet. It's got corrosion on the hands and really troubling corrosion on the case back. No box, no papers. The only documentation it comes with is a piece of paper from an RSC service. So look at the price on that. Would you be willing to pay that kind of money for that kind of watch with all those compromises, knowing you really couldn't wear it everywhere, unlike what you have now? You could take that money and I think you could probably go with something a little later and you would be able to get that pre-ceramic aesthetic, but more wearability. So I'm talking about a 14060 or a 14060M will have the gold surround. So it's not gonna have that really vintage look to it. So that could be a negative or it could be a positive depending on you know personal taste there. It's gonna have the sapphire crystal. So that could be a plus or a minus, you know, there's something kind of cool about the, the vintage acrylic crystal, but you're gonna be able to take those watches in water. They're gonna work better as a daily wear if you're planning on really wearing this watch everywhere, but it's not gonna be a birthier watch. Now, I'm not gonna go into the differences between a 14060 and a 14060M in this video, it's just too much. But if you like the wearability and aesthetic of one of those later pieces, of the two, I probably would go for a 14060M. And uh, why? Well, you get the newer movement, the 3130 movement versus the 3000 movement of the 14060. You can get it in Luminova, all right? And I think Luminova is a little bit more practical than Tritium. And the biggest thing is you get all that, but you don't have to make a compromise on the amount of text on the dial, meaning you can get it in two lines. So from the year 2000 until around 2007, they were making the 14060M with the two lines. And I think that's the sweet spot right there. After 2007, you know, you get that COSC text on the dial. I think it's a little bit much. You get the re uh, if you like that. It's personal preference, but that's probably what I would go for. So there you go, La. Those are some options. If you really are unhappy with the 124060, and look guys, what would you do? What do you think he should do? Should he go for a birth year of 5512 or 5513? Should he go for something a little bit more modern so he has the wearability and the aesthetics of the pre-ceramic? Or should he learn to love the watch he has? Now, I think he should learn to love the watch he has. That's the pinnacle of the sub, technologically speaking. And it's got the blue parachrome spring. It's got the longer power reserve. That's the movement that killed the Milgauss. And it's going to be highly accurate. It really is a watch you could wear every day, have it serviced through Rolex. You have the box. You have the papers. You paid retail for it. You don't have to worry about whether it's been polished or parts replaced or whether it's fake or has fake parts, everything is just perfect except for the aesthetics. And I feel like if you wear it, that's something you can learn to appreciate, but you have options. La, thank you for the custom video request. Let me know what you do. Viewers, let him know what you would do if you were him. Take care, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.